Well, Republicans in the House finally elected a speaker post-midnight early on Saturday after Kevin McCarthy acquiesced to the demands of the most extreme members of his caucus, the same people who tried to overthrow the 2020 election in a stunning and humiliating turn of events that nearly led to a physical brawl on the House floor and almost certainly portends nonstop chaos for the next two years. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It took four days and 15 tries, but Republicans were finally able to elect a speaker early on Saturday morning just after midnight. This is the first time in a century it's taken more than one ballot to elect a speaker, never mind 15, but when it was all said and done, Republicans reacted like they had just won the Super Bowl. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> I get it. I'd also break into applause if it meant I didn't have to spend my Saturday with Matt Gates. <laughs> hey, if you need to run errands, I can babysit your daughter. My daughter is 21. She doesn't need a Gates! <laughs> that joke is based on news reports. <laughs> so yeah, you're happy, I get it. But that reaction seems like a lot considering it took you four days and 15 tries just to make one decision. This is like if the Jets pop champagne in the locker room just for getting their cleats on. And if you're wondering, I'm not feeling bitter toward the Jets just because <laughs> They eliminated my Steelers from playoff contention by losing to the Dolphins on Sunday, even though everything else that needed to happen for the Steelers to snag a playoff berth happened. I did, however, take a swing at our security guard, Jim, this morning, and he was very cool about it. <laughs> he only broke a one of my fingers. <laughs> though he did add, there's more where that came from, which I did not love hearing. It truly is absurd to watch these doofuses celebrate like they just landed a rover on Mars because they were finally able to make one governing decision. The only time I've ever felt that much relief at someone making one decision is when I go out to dinner with my mom. Mm. <laughs> Should I have uh, the chicken or the fish? Mom, we have been here for four <laughs> days. <laughs> I want the chicken, but Lauren Boebert says I should force the waiter to read the specials one more time because she doesn't want to live in a country where halibut is off the menu. <laughs> now, as we told you last week, before he finally won on the 15th ballot, McCarthy was stuck in a sort of existential purgatory where he just had to keep sitting through losing votes over and over again because until a speaker is chosen, there's basically nothing else that Congress can do, which meant that they had to keep tallying up the votes and the House clerk Cheryl Johnson, who did a fantastic job, had to keep announcing the results the same way every time until there was finally a winner. A speaker has not been elected. 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 The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. We called her, we were like, can you just one time wear like a super goofy cowboy hat? Cause it'll make it so funny in the montage. <laughs> this poor woman, for four days, she wasn't the house clerk. She was a hostage. They should have made her. Speaker of the House. She did the Republicans a huge favor, it should be noted, by remaining calm and steadfast and good at her job. She gave the proceedings a level of decorum they honestly didn't deserve. If that had been me up there, I wouldn't have been able to say a speaker has not been elected in such a calm manner 14 times. I would have reacted like Steve Harvey when someone says something really dumb on Family Feud. We do use clips of Steve Harvey on Family Feud a lot, but only because no one in the world is better at their job than he is at his. <laughs> By the way, this all unfolded into the late hours of Friday night and early Saturday morning. Generally speaking, that is not the sign of a healthy democracy. Nothing good happens after midnight on a Friday. If you're that old and you're up after midnight, you're probably drunk and buying something real dumb off QVC. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to buy uh, three of the Victorian style porcelain doll lamps. And uh, could you throw in one of those portable hand massages as well? Yeah, my security guard broke my finger. And I think he's going to do it again. 
But of course, I couldn't help it. I was up late watching it all unfold. When I was a kid and I was up late watching TV, it used to be stuff like horror movies or Cinemax or, let's be honest, Taxi Cab Confessions. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Give me 20 minutes of an Eastern European couple in weird disco outfits coming down from cocaine and hitting on a bemused cab driver. <laughs> it wasn't much, but before the internet, it was the closest you could get to porn without finding a penthouse for him in the woods behind the school. Now things are so insane that if I'm up late watching TV, it's not softcore porn, it's C-SPAN. Because that <laughs> has been hardcore. If you were watching C-SPAN as all this unfolded, you got to see some tense and surreal images from a night that was unprecedented in American political history. Just to give you a taste of what happened before we get into the blow-by-blow, blow, there was almost a literal blow-by-blow blow when one member of the Republican caucus had to be restrained by his face so he couldn't <laughs> physically assault another Republican member of Congress. Look at this. It's one thing to hold a dude back by his shoulders, but by his face? Is this the House of Representatives or a Long Island wedding? He ain't worth it, Tony. Come on, Tony, this is Anthony's wedding. Tony, get Tony out of here so we don't embarrass Anthony. <laughs> He's having such a tough time because the Jets are so lousy. That was Republican Congressman Mike Rogers lunging after Gates, one of the last remaining holdouts. Here's what a third Republican member who was in the middle of the scrum had to say about the near brawl, which should give you a pretty good indication of where the Republican Party is at right now. Again, this is one of their fellow Republicans describing what happened. Quote, people shouldn't be drinking, especially when you're a redneck <laughs> on the House floor. Now... I know that sounds like a Jeff Foxworthy bit, but actually, <laughs> it was in the original draft of the Constitution. Um, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was being uh, super sassy towards Thomas Jefferson because Franklin lived in Philadelphia and Jefferson was from Virginia. Jefferson got drunk one night and said, quote, any dumbass can fly a kite in a lightning storm. <laughs> so then Franklin responded, and this was his real voice, because remember, he lived in Philly. These guys should take it easy on the booze and drink some water. And I have a lot of you jackals out there are gonna be like, Benjamin Franklin wasn't born in Philadelphia. He lived in Boston. He moved there when he was 17. Why would he have a Philly accent? Well, because if you have a Boston accent and you move to Philly, they, like, chuck <laughs> batteries at you. <laughs> Whatever it was back then, like, horseshoes. I don't know what. <laughs> self-preservation. He said Wooder out of self-preservation. <laughs> Friday night's drama started with McCarthy confidently predicting that he had the votes to finally become speaker after acquiescing to the after acquiescing. <laughs> after acquiescing to the demands of the most extreme members of his caucus. When reporters asked him how he could be so confident, he had a simple answer. I'll have the votes. Well, what what well, why concerns? are you confident you have the votes? Because I can't. No. Oh. <laughs> can you? Because the only person in that chamber that I trust to count is this lady. It's not exactly confidence-inspiring when you're trying to become second in line to the presidency, and your big brag is that you share a skill with a Muppet. <laughs> I can count. I have a sweet tooth. And most of all, me very ticklish. <laughs> but you'll be shocked to learn this. It turns out McCarthy couldn't count, because when Republicans got to the floor on Friday night for what they thought would be their 14th and final ballot, they discovered midway through the process that they didn't have the votes. That's when this truly unprecedented scene took place, with McCarthy walking over to Gates on the House floor during the voting to confront him and get him to change his mind. And that confrontation ended with the now infamous lunge we showed you before. Here is CNN's real-time commentary of that moment as it unfolded live on national television late on Friday night. Kevin McCarthy walks off the... He does not look happy. He changed. Somebody can change Seven, the Kevin McCarthy yes. walks off the floor. No, he's, he's talking. Or he's, I'm sorry, he walks up the floor, rather. Matt Gates. he needed him to vote yes, not present. This is it. I mean, this is do or die for him. This is quite a sight to behold. And votes Kevin McCarthy so needs one vote to become Speaker of the House. No, he does not look Matt happy. Gates does not look like he is willing to acquiesce and change his vote from present. Look, yes. There's some guy in the back who was Literally went out to yell at Gates in a pink tie, and another member pulled, pulled him, him back. Look at that thing. He looks dejected. 
Look at that. It's like watching a British nature documentary about those jacked kangaroos who <laughs> fight for dominance. This is quite a sight to behold. The alpha male is approaching his rival with his chest puffed out. And wait, what's this? The alpha male is begging with his rival to please be nice to him. Quite a humiliating spectacle. And now a third kangaroo, described by his friends as a drunken redneck, has entered the fray. <laughs> and is being restrained by his face. And that was just one of the many crazy sequences that were apparently happening on the House floor Friday night. A photographer also captured this incredible moment where Marjorie Taylor Greene held up her phone to a colleague, and then he held up his hand to indicate he didn't want the call. And when you zoom in, you can see that the call is from DT, AKA Donald Trump. Trump must have been so embarrassed by that pic of a Republican not wanting to take his call. Although. <laughs> Knowing Trump, he'd probably claim it wasn't him on the phone. The fake news is saying Republicans ignored me, but that wasn't me calling, it was a different DT. The great David Tennant. <laughs> Doctor Who himself, you know, some people, some people say his name is the doctor, but I like to say Doctor Who. <laughs> a friend came up to me once, big guy, strong guy, giant nerd, tears pouring down his face, and he said to me, sir, have you seen the doctor? And I said, Doctor Who? And he said, the doctor? And I said, I know Doctor Who? And he said, the doctor? And we went back and forth. <laughs> back and forth in circles like that for hours. This was on January 6th, by the way. It's one of the reasons I wasn't, wasn't answering calls for help, because I was engaged in this little silly vaudeville routine. It was a lot of fun. And in the end, of course, third base! <laughs> Now, McCarthy finally acquiesced. Boy, he's really putting it in there a lot today, isn't he? <laughs> God, God forbid we give in and find a synonym for acquiesced. <laughs> oh, no, Sal wouldn't cave. <laughs> McCarthy finally acqui acquiesced. Oh. Everybody at home watching, like, oh, a genius must have written this. <laughs> but McCarthy finally acquiesced to a bunch of demands from the extreme holdouts in his caucus, which we're still finding out about now. But if you think this chaos and hostage taking means we're in for two years of nonstop dysfunction in the House, Kevin McCarthy would like to tell you you're wrong, because according to him, it was actually a very valuable experience. How do you expect to govern this way if it has been taking this long to get the conference united? See, this, this is the great part. Because it took this long, now we learned how to govern. A week ago, I had no idea you could grab a congressman by the face. <laughs> but now I know we all know it's a safe and effective way of slowing them down. Things are doubtlessly going to become increasingly unhinged thanks to the concessions McCarthy made to the extremists in his caucus. The next step for the House is to vote on a new set of rules, which may happen after this taping, we're not sure. And sadly, C-SPAN will have to go back to its normal way of operating by using only government-controlled cameras. While this whole thing dragged on, C-SPAN could do whatever it wanted. And without any constraints, C-SPAN was like watching Teen Wolf play basketball. <laughs> And now with the moon no longer full, it's just a five foot six point guard who can shoot free throws and that's about it. Do we still love you, C-SPAN? Sure, but we will never forget your incredible week of furry ass dunks. Now, <laughs> sadly, we're gonna go back to the days of barely being able to hear what happens on C-SPAN because whenever someone in the C-SPAN control room asks to jack up the volume, someone else informs them that a speaker has not been elected. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a closer look.